Good to have you with us tonight, folks. Thanks for watching. All eyes are on Ohio in the final weeks of the 2012 election. And the Romney campaign hit a sour note last night at a rally in the Buckeye State. Actually, the note Mitt Romney hit was a heck of a lot worse than that. The Republican nominee, out of nowhere, told a crowd of supporters some unexpected information about auto jobs in nearby Toledo, Ohio. I saw a story today that one of the great manufacturers in this state, Jeep, now owned by the Italians, is thinking of moving all production to China. I will fight for every good job in America. I'm going to fight to make sure trade is fair. And if it's fair, America will win. Moving all production to China. Folks, this is a gigantic lie. Earlier this week, Chrysler's parent company announced that it is in talks to increase operations throughout the entire world. Now, as Bloomberg News reported, Chrysler referred to adding Jeep production sites rather than shifting output from North America to China. Translation, Chrysler is so flush with cash, it's looking to expand its operations to other countries, including the world's largest customer, and that would be China. Now, Chrysler's success is no smokescreen whatsoever. Today, the company announced 1,100 new jobs at its Jeep assembly plant in Detroit, Michigan. But wait a minute. Mitt Romney, he didn't say anything about that. You see, Mitt Romney would be talking about job creation then. And, of course, that's something he says that Barack Obama doesn't know anything about. Now, Chrysler responded to this controversy. And I want you to pay close attention to what a corporation said about what Mitt Romney said. First, they start out saying, let's set the record straight. Jeep has no intention of shifting production of its Jeep models out of North America to China. It's simply reviewing the opportunities to return Jeep output to China for the world's largest auto market. U.S. Jeep assembly lines will continue to stay in operation. A careful and unbiased reading of the Bloomberg take would have saved unnecessary fantasies and extravagant comments. You know what, folks? I don't think the Obama campaign could have written that release any better, but that came from Chrysler ripping on Mitt Romney. In fact, Mitt Romney's entire campaign is about unnecessary fantasies and extravagant comments. His lie about Chrysler was not only dishonest, it was irresponsible. Romney said hundreds of jobs were at stake with no facts whatsoever to support his claim. Where does he get his information? What kind of president is this guy going to be if he gets elected? It's like shouting uh, fire in a crowded theater, don't you think? Romney is also a hypocrite. As President Obama points out, Mitt Romney's plan for the auto workers of Ohio would have actually sent jobs to China. He's hoping you won't remember that his economic plan is more likely to create jobs in China than here in Ohio because it rewards companies that ship jobs overseas instead of companies that create jobs right here in Ohio, right here in the United States of America. If Mitt Romney had been president when the auto industry was on the verge of collapse, we might not have an American auto industry today. We'd be buying cars from China instead of selling cars to China. So here's where we are. Mitt Romney's path to the presidency is virtually impossible without Ohio's 18 electoral votes. Right now, winning Ohio is not looking good for Romney. Six Ohio polls were released this week. Five of them have President Obama leading. One is tied. President Obama's average lead in Ohio is 2.3 points. That's a big lead. Seriously. Now, families in northern Ohio have not forgotten what the rescue of the automobile industry did for their state. One in eight Ohio jobs are about the automobile industry. This is why Mitt Romney is doing everything he possibly can to downplay the impact of the auto rescue. His political director says the Obama campaign dropped the auto bailout on us, but there's only so long you can ride that one-trick pony. Well, let me ask you this, folks. You think getting a paycheck is a one-trick pony? Romney is also trying to project strength in Ohio. His campaign called last night's event 
a victory rally. Today, Romney gave a standard stump speech in Iowa, but his campaign called it a victory event. So, you know, if you believe Mitt Romney, heck, he's already won the election. The auto rescue was really no big deal, and Ohio jobs are getting shipped over to China. You can't believe a word the guy says. One guy who knows this isn't true is Senator Rob Portman. Now, he is one of Mitt Romney's top surrogates. Portman knows Romney is toast without Ohio. If we don't win Ohio, it's tough to see us winning the election nationally. It's possible, but it's very difficult. Along with all of that, we have said that Mitt Romney is a candidate who is really lacking in detail on every subject. Now his electoral chances boil down to one state. The biggest deal in the state of Ohio is the economy. Ohio's economy would be in dire straits without the rescue of the automobile industry. And Mitt Romney flat out opposed the rescue, although he's tried to reinvent that time and time again. It's not surprising. Mitt Romney would lie about car manufacturing jobs going to China. If he admits the truth, he's going to be finished in that state. So he is out there actually creating a story, telling people that a plant is going to be shut down by Chrysler and the jobs are going overseas. Nothing could be further from the truth. I mean, the, the, this is just falling right into the hands of the Obama campaign. You can't make this stuff up. But you see, if he were to talk about the 1,100 jobs that Chrysler added in Detroit, then, of course, that would be complimenting the president on job creation and saving the automobile industry. It's a tight spot for Romney and his surrogates, no doubt about it. Get your cell phones out. I want to know what you think. Tonight's question, is lying the only way Mitt Romney can win Ohio? Text A for yes, text B for no to 622-639. You can always go to our blog at ed.msnbc.com. We'll bring you the results later on in the program. Now, I am joined tonight by a couple of sources who know all about automobile rescue, and that is former Governor Ted Strickland of Ohio and an Obama 2012 campaign co-chair. And also with us tonight is Congressman Tim Ryan of Ohio. Gentlemen, great to have you with us. Governor, you first. I, I mean, I can, I can only think that this is a complete <laughs> disservice to the people of Ohio to go out in front of a crowd and erroneously put out information that cuts right to the fabric of what this election is all about, and that's jobs. What's your reaction to this, Governor? Well, my reaction is Mitt Romney is a desperate man. He knows he's losing Ohio. If he loses Ohio, he's losing the election. But for him to, to do what he did is despicable. Um, think of the angst that those workers felt when they heard him say that. And uh, obviously it showed a lack of judgment and a lack of truthfulness. This man is not ready to be the president of the United States of America. He, he is uh, as... As John Huntsman said during the primary season, he is like a well-oiled weather vane. You never know where Mitt Romney's going to be on any issue on any day. And this is just but the latest example of, of, of his desperation in trying to reach the Ohio voter. But Ohioans have figured this guy out. They know who's on their side, and it's Barack Obama and Joe Biden. And that's why I am convinced to my depths that Ohio is going to do the right thing and um, the president's going to be reelected with Ohio's support. Okay. Congressman uh, Ryan, uh, you know, accuracy is important in your business. I mean, to be a public servant and to stand up in front of people and say something that is flat out false, doesn't this speak to the character of Mitt Romney to play with people's emotions like this? I don't think it, there's any doubt about it. It does show the, the kind of coldness that we saw with him at Bain Capital, the kind of detachment that he has when he talks about these issues that he did not even consider, as Governor Strickland just said, the families that would have been affected in Northwest Ohio by his comments. They've had enough problems uh, dealing with uh, the Romney policies, the Bush economic policies, the way they've handled things. But he's not happy with that. He comes in uh, and, and continues to try to scare people. And what this is a consistent pattern, though, Ed, this is the same kind of business that these Republicans do. 
They troll around on the Internet. They find one story that's made up <laughs> and they use it, whether it's uh, Todd Aiken using it like his, his science that he has for legitimate rape or the goofy stuff that these guys come up with with uh, climate change. And now he finds an article saying something about China. God knows where it's come from, but he he peddles it uh, is the truth in Ohio. But the reality on the ground is so much different. People are working now because of Obama. So this nonsense doesn't doesn't work. Congressman, uh, what about the 1,100 jobs that Chrysler is adding in Detroit? I mean, why didn't Mitt Romney say that? Well, of course, that would be any good news. I'm sure he didn't talk about the 2% uh, growth that we've had. He's not talking about any of the positive things happening. He didn't want to bring it up because, quite frankly, uh, there's a lot of people in northwest Ohio that would work in those plants or that uh, would expand because they're part of a supply chain out there. And he certainly doesn't want to give Obama any credit. I'm telling you, people here in Ohio are enthusiastic about what's happening in this election. And Romney's trying to throw uh, water uh, on the fire but what's actually happening is with all of the Obama coming in here, Clinton coming in here, uh, we've got we're throwing gas on the fire and Ohio is going <laughs> to yeah. deliver and they're going to prevent Mitt Romney from becoming president. Governor, isn't this a perfect example that Mitt Romney will say anything anywhere to try to get a vote? The truth just simply well, doesn't matter. Uh, ab ab absolutely, Ed. But, uh, you know, o Ohioans, as I said, they figured this guy out. Um, a Swiss bank account, investments in the Cayman Islands, saying he likes to fire people, cars with elevators for his, I mean, homes with elevators for his cars. Uh, and then we saw him in that videotape talking in such a disparaging, disrespectful way about so many uh, Americans, and many of those people are Ohioans. This guy doesn't understand regular working people. He, he is so out of touch. And so it may be easy for him to come into a, a community and yeah. talk as he did and say, you're going to lose all of these jobs, not thinking about what that means to those people and, and how it could uh, hurt them just to have to listen to that kind yeah. of dire he, forecast. He, here, here's what I take out of this story, gentlemen. This guy wants to be president of the United States. He takes a morsel of information off the Internet. It's totally not checked out, not resourced, yeah. and he's willing to That's use right. it in front of people. This is the most reckless example we have seen yes. of how he would operate. He simply is not qualified to have the responsibility of the presidency and to operate in the Oval Office. Gentlemen, great to have you with us tonight. Former Governor Ted Strickland of Thank Ohio you. and also Ohio Congressman Tim Ryan with us. Thank you so much. Remember to answer tonight's question there at the bottom of the screen. Share your thoughts on Twitter at Ed Show and on Facebook. We always want to know what you think. Coming up, the war of words. Find out why a big endorsement is driving the Republicans absolutely crazy tonight. I'll share their shocking reactions with you when we come back. Take us to break meatloaf.